Rumor says that there is a mysterious island in the South Pacific where the entire population is women. People call it the Virgin Island. It is also believed that the women clan has a mysterious seed which causes them to age 10 times slower than normal humans. Therefore, many people are trying to find the location of the island. And who wouldn't? One of them is Mr. Song, who wants to become immortal. So, he has been sending his men of experts and explorers to search for the island. Elsewhere, Wang, the protagonist of the movie, listens to a news report about Mr. Song, who has once again funded a large sum of money for his expedition to search for Virgin Island. The news then adds about the mystery of the island, detailing that none of the explorers who participated in the expedition so far have survived. Till now, only one person has ever set foot on the island, a famous explorer named Lee. Lee is none other than Wang's father, but he never came back from the island and left no message for the world or for his son. It is rumored that he was mesmerized by the beauties on the island, so he decided to stay there permanently. Those rumors are almost certainly true. Determined to find his father, Wang decides to participate in Mr. Song's expedition and heads off to the shore to board a ship. There, he meets a friend, Hyun Wu, who claims to be an expert navigator as he has recently graduated from the Somali Navy SEALs. After setting up everything, Wang and Hyun board the ship. And and just as they are about to take off, one of Mr. Song's men approaches them and hands over a GPS tracker. After a while, the two finally hit the ocean, hence kickstarting their adventure. Initially, they are hopeful about the mission, but after two months of wandering into nothingness, they become pessimistic. By this time, their food supply has also run out, so they pray that they reach the island soon. One day, while the boys are complaining about the GPS not working, a flock of birds flies over them. Wang, who is lying on his back, feels a drip on his face, and when he smells it, he realizes that it's seagull poo. This indicates that they are near an island, and when Wang peers through his binoculars, he confirms the news and shares it with his friend. Wang has never been this happy to be pooed on in his life. Unfortunately, the high tides do not allow the boys to dock their ship, so they are forced to swim all the way. In the next scene, when the two friends wake up on the shore, they notice an army of women surrounding them. While still not fully conscious, Wang asks if they're finally on the Virgin Island but the women just keep on staring and remain silent. Later, the two are brought to their camp for interrogation. As usual, Hyun becomes overconfident and tries to smack talk the women, but ends up getting beaten by a durian stick. Because of the incident, the boys are locked inside a wooden cage as a punishment. In the meantime, the leader of the women, who they refer to as Patriarch, approaches the two and starts talking. She mentions that only a handful of people have breached their island in the past 500 years, but all of them were experienced navigators. Hyun is in disbelief that the girls have been around for such a long period, and joking asks if they are really immortal. However, the patriarch and her women simply leave them behind and go about their ways. Once the women are out of sight, Wang takes out his hidden knife and plots with Hyun to escape at nightfall. They succeed in their plan and eventually get out of the prison. After this, Wang decides to check out the tribe for any clues, while Hyun sets out to find ways to escape the island. The next scene shows Hyun heading towards the jungle to see if there's a way out, while Wang arrives at the women's village and enters one of the huts. It turns out that the women Women have filled the jungle with traps, so Hyun Woo unknowingly falls for them. At first, he falls down a rabbit hole below and then gets pierced by a wooden arrow through his back. To make the situation worse, he also gets hammered by several coconuts on his head. Meanwhile, Mu Yan, a typical innocent sister of the women's tribe, and her sister Moon enter the hut in which Wang has been snooping around. Surprisingly, the hut is a bathing place for the islanders, and when Mu Yan starts taking off her clothes and preparing for her bath, Wang tries to sneak his way out of the room. Unfortunately, he gets caught by the girl's sister, who doesn't let him go. Wang tries to bribe the girl with a treat, but she eventually screams, alerting every other woman in the village. Terrified, Wang runs for his life, while the women chase after him with spears. He tries his best to scare them off, but eventually gets captured. In the trial room, the patriarch tells Wang that breaking out of prison is a sin in their culture, and that trying to attack the clan assures a deathly punishment. Just then, a a bruised and battered Hyun arrives at the scene to rescue his friend. He threatens the clan that he is a trained soldier who knows combat skills, but the women only get irritated by his lies and beat him once again. The clan believes that being seen by a man when they are naked makes them ugly. Hence, they demand to execute Wang and his friend. 
But before readying the boys for their final rite, the Patriarch is curious to know why they visited her island. Wang responds that he is in search of his father, who came to the island ten years ago. To his surprise, the Patriarch reveals that she had met his father, but she too is looking for him. She mentions that if she ever sees his father again, she will kill him. Saying this much, she orders her women to take the culprits to their sacred tree and grill them there. Hyun pleads with the women that he wasn't the one who saw Mu Yan in such a condition and asks to be released, but to no avail. Next, the women prepare the grill, while the boys are tied and kept separately in two giant barrels. Hyun fears that they are being marinated before being roasted, but he is interrupted by Mu Yan, who has finally come to face her pervert. She lashes out at Wang for spying on her, and tells him that to lift the curse of being ugly, she has to kill him. However, just when it appears that she is about to finish him off with a knife, she instead cuts open his rope. Before letting the two escape, the innocent Mu Yan asserts that she hates Wang, but at the same time, she doesn't want him to die because of her. Unfortunately, the boys take the jungle's way and fall for the set traps. The following morning, Wang and Hyun are once again captured and tied in front of the sacred tree. The women prepare different kinds of ingredients and light a fire to marinate the boys and eat them after roasting. But the process is interrupted when Chun Hua, one of the women from the clan, drowns in the ocean. While the women rush to the shore, the boys take this opportunity to escape by burning their tight ropes. They also flee the scene, not realizing that they have put fire to the sacred tree. Meanwhile, the women cry in pain after seeing their friends struggling in the ocean. The two friends prepare to use the distraction to sneak out of the place, but at the last second, Wang changes his mind and decides to help the drowning girl. Without thinking about the time when the islanders wanted to kill him and his friend, Wang goes to the shore and swims in the ocean to rescue Chun Hua. After he brings her back to the shore, Hyun jumps into action and prepares CPR on an unconscious Chun Hua. Fortunately, she starts breathing again, and the women applaud the boy's bravery. Later, Wang and Hyun are once again brought in front of the patriarch. Chun Hua wants her leader to excuse the boys as they saved her life. At this point, she has already started to develop feelings for Hyun. The patriarch also thinks of pardoning the boys, but just then, she is informed that their sacred tree has been burned and destroyed. After getting to know that Wang and Tian are behind this incident, the patriarch decides to execute them immediately. However, Mu Yan and Chan Hua suggest they give the boys one last chance. As a result, the patriarch reluctantly gives them three months to restore the tree. If the tree doesn't come back to life, they will be killed mercilessly. The next day, Wang and Tian try their best to polish charcoal off the tree and water it. As time passes, the boys become close to the women as they help them in their everyday life. With the use of their modern tools and techniques, Wang and Tian catch huge fish and teach them to grow vegetables. Meanwhile, Chun Hua tries her best to grab Hyun's attention and brings him flowers and durian every day. One day, when Wang tries to find a signal on his GPS, he notices a viper lurking behind Mu Yan. He immediately springs into action and rescues her. As the two lay down in a romantic manner, Mu Yan reveals that the snake is actually her pet. The following day, Wang and Tian are elated to find the sacred tree sprouting. Later that night, all the island women, along with the boys, celebrate with a feast and dance together. Wang notices Mu Yan peacefully dancing and remarks that the value of life isn't about the length of time, but rather about something that is worth protecting with your life. He then notes that he is lucky to have found it, as he wants to protect Mu Yan and her tribe. Sometime later, Mu Yan approaches Wang and tells him about the history of their tribe. She shares that a long time ago, there was an all-women tribe known as the Witch Tribe. They reproduced by Parthenogenesis. They were the tribe closest to nature among primitive humans, responsible for guarding the seed, Yuan, which contained the secrets of life. Their mission was to protect the balance between nature and life. However, as human settlements expanded, their thirst for killing increased, and one day, they eventually found out about the seed Yuan. Hence, a genocide-like hunt was carried out on the witch tribe. To protect the seed, the head of the clan gave it to the youngest woman in the tribe and asked her to run away as far as possible. The girl witnessed her entire family being killed, but as told, she escaped the place. Not long after, she woke up on a deserted island and saw that the seed she carried had started sprouting all over the place. The deserted island gradually became full of life. Slowly, the girl got older and a new witch clan flourished on the island, continuing to guard the Yuan seed. Mu Yan then reveals that the young woman is none other than the patriarch and that they are the descendants of the witch clan. 
The following morning, she takes Wang to the place where she had last seen his father. There, Wang finds his father's old journal, where he has written about his time with the witch clan. He writes that it was because of their warm gesture, kindness, simplicity, and reverence for life that he didn't want the expedition to destroy their life. So, he never reported back, hoping that the clan and their secrets of life remained secluded from the greed of modern men. He then concludes his journal, portraying his worry for Wang, and hopes that his son will understand the choices he made. In the next scene, Wang realizes what he has to do, and destroys the GPS tracker. But before he and Hyun can walk away, they hear a beep coming from the GPS, indicating that it's still working. Elsewhere, Mr. Song is notified about the island's location. The boys then rush to the patriarch, and warn her to leave the island immediately, as Mr. Song and his men are on their way to get the seed that they have been protecting. They then devise a plan to seduce the men, lure them in, and take them out one by one. Soon enough, Mr. Song arrives with his crew and orders four of his men to check the island. The men arrive at the village, but they are surprised to see beautiful women waiting for them. We weren't expecting to see women on this island of women. Next, the women play their part, get the men drunk, and successfully knock them out. After his men don't report back, Mr. Song himself ventures into the island and starts his inspection. Wang and Hyun greet him at the gate and try to convince him that it isn't the virgin island that he was after, but Mr. Song is no fool, so he orders his men to tie up the women, along with the two boys. He then threatens the patriarch and asks her for the secret of life so that he can become immortal like them. When she refuses, Mr. Song threatens to kill Moon. As a result, the women reluctantly guide Mr. Song and his men to the place where they have hidden the Yuan seed. However, on the way, when Chun Hua knocks down a man, the whole tribe fights back. Meanwhile, Mr. Song escapes the place with Wang and forces him to wear a time bomb. He then threatens to detonate it if he doesn't reveal the secret of the witch clan. Just then, Hyun, along with the women, arrive at the scene and subdue Mr. Song. However, during the process, Mr. Song manages to press the button and activates a 30-second countdown on the bomb. With time running out, Wang realizes that he has to make the ultimate sacrifice, so he runs towards the ocean alone. While running, Wang has a lot of thoughts in his mind. After all the experiences he has had with the women's clan, he finally understands that their mission is to protect the balance between nature and life. He also understands the sacrifice sacrifice that his father made back then. Now, he has to make this same sacrifice to protect the clan. Soon, the bomb explodes in the sea. Seeing this, Mu Yan screams in agony, while the others weep over the loss of the man who has made the ultimate sacrifice. Then, the screen goes black. In the post credit scene, Wang is shown miraculously waking up, as it seems that the magic of the island has resurrected him for his selfless sacrifice. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.